The Tale of Jolly Robin by Arthur Scott Bailey Chapter 1 Nestlings Of course, there was a time once when Jolly Robin was just a nestling himself, with two brothers and one sister, all of them, like him, much spotted with black. He lived in a house in one of Farmer Green's apple trees. The house was made of grass and leaves, plastered on the inside with mud, and lined with softer, finer grass, which his mother had chosen with the greatest care. But Jolly never paid much attention to his first home. What interested him more than anything else was food. From dawn till dark, he was always cheeping for something to eat. And since the other children were just as hungry as he was, those four growing babies kept their parents busy finding food for them. It was then that Jolly Robin learned to like angleworms. And though he ate greedily of insects and bugs, as well as wild berries, he liked angleworms best. Jolly and his sister and his brothers could always tell when their father or their mother brought him home dainty, because the moment the parent lighted upon the limb where the nest was built, they could feel their home sink slightly from the added weight upon the branch. Then the youngsters would set up a loud squalling with a great craning of necks and stretching of orange-colored mouths. Sometimes, when the dainty was specially big, Mr. or Mrs. Robin would say, Cuck, cuck! That meant, open wide! But they seldom found it necessary to give that order. Somehow, Jolly Robin managed to eat more than the rest of the nestlings, and so he grew faster than the others. He soon learned a few tricks, too. For instance, if Mrs. Robin happened to be sitting on the nest to keep her family warm, when Mr. Robin returned with a lunch for the children, Jolly had a trick that he played on his mother, in case she didn't move off the nest fast enough to suit him. He would whisper to the rest of the children, and then they would jostle their fond parent, lifting her up above them, and sometimes almost upsetting her, so that she had hard work to keep from falling off the nest. Mrs. Robin did not like that trick very well, but she knew that Jolly would not annoy her with it long. Indeed, he was only 11 days old when he left his birthplace and went out into the wide world. You see, the young folk grew so fast that they soon more than filled the house, so there was nothing their parents could do but persuade them to leave home and learn to fly. One day, therefore, Mr. Robin did not bring his children's food to the edge of the nest and drop it into their mouths. Instead, he stood on the limb a little distance away from them and showed them a plump angleworm. The sight of that dainty was more than Jolly Robin could resist. He scrambled boldly out of the nest and tottering up to his father on his wobbling legs. He snatched a tempting morsel out of his proud parent's bill. Jolly never went back to the nest after that. The next day, Mrs. Robin coaxed the other children from home in the same fashion. And though it may seem a heartless act, it was really the best thing that could have happened to Jolly and his sister and his brothers. You see... They had to learn to fly, and so long as they stayed in the nest, they could never learn a difficult feat like flying. <laughs>